It's a brand new day, hey. Take a good day, make it great, okay. Welcome to Let's Chat, a Bible Chapel podcast. Join us each week, no matter where you find yourself, physically or spiritually, as we share real conversations that are relevant to believers today. We want to help you experience and incorporate God in your life, not just on Sundays, but every day. Let's join the conversation now. It's a brand new day. All right, friends, welcome back to Let's Chat. It's, uh, man, it's a pleasure every week to come together through this avenue of this podcast to talk about what God is doing in our lives, hear testimonies from brothers and sisters in Christ about what God is doing through their lives. And I hope you've enjoyed Share the Joy, not just the awesome intro we have, but the conversations we've had. We've had, I mean, every type of conversation from John to Allison to Matt to Maureen last week. I think, um, um, I think the, the statement, Josh, from last week is, oh, by the way, we're, we're working on getting Josh a mic, maybe by the next season. Right, Josh? That's our commitment. So uh, that way he doesn't have to just hope everything I say is accurate because he can't he can't speak into it right now without a mic. But a statement for me is Maureen said last week, I can't wait to die. And that's a powerful statement that she just has that anticipation of being with Christ, the joy of the Lord that she views uh, that moment in that manner. And at 81 years of age, she is making it a mission to pray for every person before every week who comes to this church and goes into those doors of the Bible chapel. So every every week it's been phenomenal just seeing God use these testimonies. So I pray that uh, you're ready again today uh, to let the Lord speak through myself and my guest that I'm about to introduce in just a second. And uh, keep let's chat in prayer. We've been getting so much good feedback. And I tell you what, I'm going to give an invitation for you. Uh, if you have just ideas, send them our way. You know, we continue to plan out through next year, but uh, you can uh, email me. My info's on the website. Uh, let me know. Let me know if you if Let's Chat has been speaking to you, if you got some ideas for us where to go. But we're excited. In the, in the coming weeks, we'll be sharing what is our next series we're doing after Share the Joy. All right. So we're going to jump into today's conversation. And I'm excited. I think I say this every week. I'm so excited for our guest. And I mean that. This and I, Every person I have a unique relationship with. With John, he was my literal fifth grade teacher. Allison partnered in ministry. Matt student ministry guy, getting to know him, like-minded and age and stage. Maureen, you would think, what does Dave have in common with an 81-year-old? But just our love for the Lord, her her heart for prayer. and But this guy is literally like my older brother. I just follow in his footsteps. Everything from where he went to school, from his passion for sports, his passion for Jesus. Uh, Jamie Eisner is like that older brother to me, like really older brother. That's not true. But let me let me welcome my older brother in Christ, Jamie Eisner, to Let's Chat. Jamie, welcome to the podcast, man. D- Dave, great to be here. It's an <laughs> honor and a privilege to be asked to join you. Uh, a little bit outside of my comfort zone today, but That's right. um, super sweet. We're in it together. May, we're in it together. May, may God receive the honor and glory from our time together. And uh, Amen. all you listeners out there. We've been saying probably... Um, Five years or so, we really started to get to know each other. I came back from Wilkinsburg, mm-hmm. right? And we have so many of those common themes. We'll hit a bunch of them in the podcast, but love for Jesus, former athletes, played football at Grove City. Mm-hmm. Um, and we just have these common threads. And we'll, we'll, we'll weave them out more, but that's why I can call you my older brother. Are you okay with that, my I'm older gr- brother? I'm, I'm great. I'm great with that. I'm great with that. So maybe when we play golf uh, 15 years from now, you can say, older brother, play from the senior tees. That's when exactly. You can stay back Take a little blues. extra yes, distance uh, there. I like that. You definitely don't need that right now, but no. I like that. That's right. You'll have that right someday. Yeah, someday. Someday. <laughs> someday. All right. So always like to do this, Jamie, is just instead of me introducing who is Jamie Eisner, uh, I would love for you just to take a moment and let's start there. Just talk about your family and then also how long you've been coming to the Bible Chapel. Yeah, sure. Dave, before I jump into that, I just want to say I love you, man. Love you too, I respect brother. you. Thank you. Um, and and it, is, it is my joy mm. to be your brother in Christ. And Thank I think you. when you look at guys that I really gravitate to, you possess all those things. Mm. You are loyal and faithful to your Savior. You're loyal and faithful to your bride. Mm. Um, it's just a treat to do this Thanks, with you. Man. So that thanks. means a lot. Yeah. So let's let's go. Um, so just a little bit of background on uh, myself. Uh, 
I met this amazing girl in the summer of 1990 uh, up in the hills of Boswell, Pennsylvania. Uh, Sharon and I have been together for, we like to say over 30 years, we've been married for 27. 27. Um, we met at summer's best two weeks as teenage kids, dated long distance for uh, seven years. Wow. And uh, it's just been amazing spending my days That's with my awesome. best friend. So God's blessed us with three kids, our oldest, Laurel. She actually serves as a global yeah, worker. Yeah, she's one of our partner in global work. Her and her husband, David, and uh, they just had our first grandchild. Yeah, they're, congratulations, they're, they're, Grandpa. Yeah, they had a young daughter, sweet Lydia. Yeah, not, so that, that's um, precious. Our middle, Brooke, she's in Lynchburg at Liberty University, senior uh, finance business major. We're really proud of her. and, and uh, our youngest, Tim, just graduated from South Bay at high school, and he's a freshman business major down at Liberty. So yeah. that's just quick background on the family. Um, something kind of fun, though, history on the Bible Chapel. We've been coming to the Bible Chapel since 1998. Wow. And uh, I believe that when we started coming to the Bible Chapel, we had the longest commute. We kind of lived out by Cabela's, so about an hour away. Wow. And as Sharon and I, uh, as our family started to grow, we really prayed we wanted to have our church body be the focus of where we lived. Mm. So we looked for a home for about a year and a half and we decided to settle down in South Fayette. And, and it was really, we picked South Fayette because of the Bible Chapel. So mm. we've been here for, for basically all the years we've been married. That's we've awesome. raised our family here and, and we love the body of Christ here. I love that because, you know, no judgment with how God leads people to where they go, right? Sometimes work takes you somewhere, mm. um, but oftentimes, Church can be maybe three or four in the priority list, whether it's work, family, justifiable, um, school district, right. right? That's what drives you. Then we'll find a church there. That's pretty amazing that literally it was, we want Ours to be- Ours was church. It was church. Like this church is the anchor. Everything else needs to come around yeah. that. I love that. I pretty love sweet. that of the eyes. It sweet. makes sense if you get to know uh, uh, Jamie and Sharon through the years. All right, now let's dig in because I've always known you. And Linda James, who is just here, another one of our amazing staff members who helps with List Joy. She was one along with me when we thought about this series who said, you got to have Jamie Eisner on. Because you are a, a man of God who just exudes the joy of the Lord. So uh, I know you trusted in Jesus at a young age, uh, up and down teenage years like oh, we all do. You know, I share that openly at the pulpit that right, I was that middle right. child pastor. So that my parents like, I don't know where Dave's going. Um, but by the time you hit Grove City, where you went to college, you know, that's when the joy of the Lord began to, I would say, dominate your life. You know, talk about from those early years, college years, through through your family, how you've always been known as a man who has the joy of the Lord. Just talk about that history. Yes, yeah, it <sighs> Jesus, I praise you from the family, right, that I'm mm. from. I want to I want to start with um, you know, I'm a child. Um that really had two parents that modeled it really well. My mom and dad were very instrumental in my faith at a young age. Um, ran into a hard time around 16. And really my dad was the rock mm. in my life that, that really helped me cement my relationship with Jesus. And if you talk about people that are joyful for Jesus, I would say that's my mom and dad. Um, you know, my Nana passed away a couple years ago, but, but there's really this beautiful, um, legacy of yeah. joyful, passionate followers of Christ mm. from our family. Um, as far as uh, when did that start, um, I think that it was cool that a focal point in the home growing up, um, 3 John 1, 4, mm. was hanging at the bottom of the steps. It says, I have no greater joy than to see that my children are walking in the truth. Amen. As a young teenager, it was hard for me to grasp that. Um, but that was really ingrained in my mind. Yeah, It's really sweet now that as Sharon and I have had children who have trusted and followed Jesus, that's so true. Um, but we talk about joy is so different than happiness. Yeah. Um, give you a couple things, maybe a little bit of story on, on joy and maybe how that became part of my identity. When I graduated from high school, I spent a couple summers working as a counselor at Summer's Best Two Weeks. And that was the first time I was with young adults my age that were really on their own time studying mm. God's word. Mm. Pretty cool. Yes. Um, maybe you, you all watching would remember, when did you really start to study God's word with your peers? So when I went back to Grove City College, I was an RA. And this okay. is one thing that I just really... Um, 
we'll never forget. It was really the first time I kind of used my life first, First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 in application. I was walking with the Dina men and the Dina women and they were having a really bad day. And, and I said to them, haven't you checked out God's word? Don't mm. you remember what it says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, be joyful, always pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for us yes. through Christ Jesus our Lord. And I can remember w wanting to do that out of gentleness, but these were mature believers and we all kind of stepped back and mm. we're just like, yeah, I need to find joy through this trial that we were dealing with. So that but, was like the first time that I remember. That was really the first time that. where You've had the joy of the Lord, but God wanted to use you as a vessel to challenge other believers. Gently, to live right? It says Lord. in God's word to do that gently. We're called to provoke, which means stir up. That's good stuff. Yeah. Now, with, with why, mature believers, you with, can do that. Hundred percent. Why I know that you and I are meant to be like intimate brothers in Christ, because I told you when you when you told me yesterday we were talking about the podcast that First Thessalonians five sixteen through eighteen was the first passage that became like your life verse. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I was just smiling, which I do awkwardly at times and looking at you we thinking- We both do. Yeah, we You're all do. You're not alone, man. You're not on an <laughs> island, I'm with you. Uh, because that's the first three verses I ever memorized in scripture. Mm -hmm. I told Jamie, one, because two out of three are the shortest verses in the Bible outside of Jesus is wept. So I was like, this is easy. Yeah. Be joyful, memorize the Bible verse, pray easy. continually. But easy when I was growing up, I wrestled with what was God's yeah. will. And it, scripture says, it's not always the career or that buy that home or move to this location. It says, if you're joyful each day, you're doing the will of God. Yeah. If you pray and communicate with me every day, you're doing the will of God. Yeah. If you give thanks to me every day, you're doing the will. That means every day the believer can do the yeah. will of the God. So I just love that we have that connection. Yeah, super, super sweet. All let right, me, keep talking about family and stuff. About, yeah. yeah, family. So I, I, they, I was asking Dave, hey, is this appropriate? Because um, I, I sit here with you as a um, I told you, guest a that wants to be Unlike a sermon humble. on Sunday, yeah, all the rules are gone, gone off let's on go. the podcast. So, so let's go. I have these two sweet nieces in Florida that I adore. And when they went from baby stage to kind of young kids, they gave me this affectionate name, JJ. Mm. And so that's pretty sweet. So in our family, I have been called by children, JJ, and that stands for Joyful J. My mom and dad called me J growing up. And uh, so that's kind of fun. Um, Sharon and I get hit with question, this question all the time. We're new grandparents. What's your grandparent name going to be? Jamie, what are you choosing? Sharon, yeah, what are you yeah. choosing? And how about this? I'm going with JJ. Yeah. I've never heard of a grandparent, <laughs> grandfather called JJ. But you know, it's my heart's desire to be remembered mm. by my family and people that know me intimately well mm. is being someone that really just oozes joy Amen. Um, for Jesus. So that's Amen. something kind of fun. One last thing, there's, I know there's gonna be a couple of viewers watching that have heard my phrase, joy muffin. And, and if you're part of my inner circle and you're having a bad day, maybe you've heard the, the statement attitude check. Yeah. I'll say, Dave, you're kind of struggling a little bit. I might say, hey man, you need a joy muffin. And what that <laughs> means is, it's kind of corny. What's a joy muffin? It's just a saying that I came up with yeah. about 15 years ago saying, hey yeah. man, you're a little off track there. Yeah. You, gotta, you gotta check it. So those are just a couple family things. I love um, that. My, and, and I'm gonna be 50 this year, but yeah. I'm ready to die. Mm. Jesus is my king. Mm. And, and I, while I'm here, I wanna bring him honor and glory with every minute of every day. Right. Um, my my great grandparents and grandparents, the verse that they've picked on their tombstone has been something that has been very significant in our family. And on my tombstone, my family knows that that I want First Thessalonians 5, 16 mm. through 18 and just be, to be remembered as a person I love of that. joy. I love that, I love that. Um, and I love that, how old are your nieces roughly? When they They're teenagers. They're teenagers. So one's, a, I think, a freshman in high school and the other one's a junior in high school. Right. So this has been going on for a decade. But the impact that uh, uh, you didn't... You, Abby and Sophie, I'm forwarding you this there link. There you go. You, you got to watch this. Yes, I love it. You didn't have to... And I love that, for, especially for young children. One, just recapping real quick. I love the how quickly but in depth you gave us your history is your joy... Yes, it's all from the Lord, but he used the avenue of your parents. Mm. Your parents are so critical to instill and that. And now yeah, you to the no next doubt. generation, whether it's your own children or your, your nieces, or now your grandchild. Yeah. You, more than anything else, if I can just 
point them down that same path that my parents did. I yeah. love that. And, and it I doesn't that. mean that I'm nonstop no, up. And 100%. I, I, the joy is a result right. of knowing God's word right. and living for him. Yeah. And in the midst of right. happy, sad, hurt, right, we've got this peace. Right. We've got this hope yes. that'll fill us with this joy, which is really um, different yeah. than what the masses carry. 100%. All right, let's go within that whole history you gave us. Let's go back to your career and calling period. So, mm -hmm. you know, graduating from Grove City, you got engaged at 21 years old. Is that right? Around 21? I think, I, Sharon, I think 17 <laughs> years old, junior in high school, I was like, you you're knew. the one. <laughs> She's like, what are you talking about? I was like, listen. But coming out of college, we, you're thinking we were ministry. Engaged, we were engaged our junior year of college. So you're thinking ministry, career, job. You know, how did you realize? Because you talk about you came to the place where when you were wrestling with, you know, do I go into vocational ministry work for the church? Do I go get a different career path? When did you come to a realize at even a young professional age that? all work is ministry talk about yeah. that let me just throw in a little note to uh, mom and dad Gigi and pa thank you so much for trusting me to love and care for and protect your daughter um i adore her i'm crazy about you sharon um yeah so let's go so so um maybe young men watching this i was a solid c plus student mm -hmm. school was fine um on my way through school but but it was when i was engaged dave you might remember this at grove mm -hmm. city college Going into my senior year, I was like first one in line for career services. Let's get the resume out. See, Let's go I didn't find engage it. after college. I didn't have to care until after. Okay, That's so it. I was like <laughs> senior year. I was like, I want to get straight yeah. A's. And people are like, well, Jamie, it's a little bit too late. Your grade point average <laughs> is still going to be a C plus grade point average. No, but in on all seriousness, God yeah. has always, he has been so faithful bringing strong men mm. into my life who have poured into me and have cared for me. And, and I can remember... Um, Jim, you know who you are. I was engaged and I was um, contemplating which direction to go professionally. And I said, Jim, I, I just don't know if I should go full-time ministry or if I should go full-time business world. I think that's the way I said it. And he mm. said, Jamie, let me stop you right there. It's simple. You're going full-time ministry. I was like, oh, that's great, Jim. Thank you for giving me that direction. Do you think I should go the church route or Christian right. outdoor camps? He says, no, 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 no. You're missing the boat there. Mm. Full-time ministry, I don't care if you're in a suit or I don't care if you're in the middle of the woods. Mm -hmm. Where your paycheck comes from doesn't really matter. You're going full-time ministry. Oh, so and that good. was such a sweet so um, lesson. Yeah as a young man before I took my first job out of school. Yeah. And um, mm. thank you, Jim. Well, I think that's critical for every age and stage believer, whether you're, I mean, hopefully um, for those who are young enough to be right where you were, 21 or 22, maybe you're younger, you're in your 20s, you need to listen to that now, which will impact your career. For some of you, if you're like Jamie and I, 40s, about to be 50, you need to switch that gear in mind Your that you're in full time is ministry. way better than mine. These, these bright lights, <laughs> it makes me feel like I'm just really bald. Does it look like I'm no, that bald? No, I think your hair's good. The shine represents the joy of the Lord. That's how I see it, okay? Can I get back to my. my <laughs> <Yeah. discussion? laughs> He's trying to keep it fun. Come it on. It's so good. Just mess. So, but I think that's so critical. That is so critical. All of us are in full time ministry. Amen. If you Here's love the Jesus, deal Can you, the pastor get into the office building and in finance meetings with 12 other colleagues? No, he can't. So you're telling me the only way you can reach people is if they come through a church door. No way. Actually, totally off subject, kind of off subject. One of my, when I, you know, I was in sales and business consulting mm -hmm. for about seven years before God told me, you're denying your clear calling to be a pastor. So uh, I went the opposite route and I did a final project on my first master's in, uh, I, I got, is my capstone project was entitled incarnational ministry because I wanted to do this. I wanted to show from scripture that Jesus did the bulk of his ministry in the community with people where they were at. Mm -hmm. He wasn't standing in the temple. He focused on going where the people are. That's what believers do every day, Yeah. right? You are doing incarnational ministry every day. Well, we're all sinners in need of a savior. Yeah. So we've got to go be lights in this 100%. dark world. So that, actually, that, that's a good segue to the next uh, area I want to talk about, which is, you know, how God has now used you to reach people, meaning this, you know, the joy of the Lord 
is one thing for the believer personally, that we can operate every day with joy. But God wants to use that joy, I believe, as a catalyst to reach people. So just talk about in your life how God has used this joy that you have for him as the number one catalyst to open up opportunities to share Jesus with people. Yeah, that's, let's go church okay. as I answer that, right? Yeah. So so I would, um, Sharon and I have been just all in mm -hmm. for our lives, right? Mm -hmm. At least since we were 18 years old, yeah. 16, 18 years old for Jesus. And I think one of the things that believers like to say is, what's the best way to evangelize? What's this track? What's yeah. this book? What's this Bible study? Can we um, invite our neighbor to the, and, and, and here's what I would say. In my 30 plus years of being a passionate follower of Christ, what has been most effective in sharing the love of Christ with others is being in a situation where they actually ask me a question. Hmm. Like you think sometimes we maybe um, are, in an, are in a spot where you've just got to sit and listen. Mm -hmm. easy, to, easy to tune that out. Um, but think if we're sitting on a couch and we want an answer to something, what do you, maybe, maybe you go on the internet and you kind of look something up. Right. If you're face to face with someone and you ask them a question, mm -hmm. you're going to probably get a, someone who's listening that wants to hear. Yeah. And I would say in all of my years, here's something that happens to me on a regular basis. Are you for real? Mm -hmm. Are you like this all the time? And and, and I say to God, yes, sure I'm happy and sad, and yeah. sure I'm um, right. I go through normal motions like everyone else. Right. But I would say um, the contagious joy of Jesus mm. that I do feel like oozes from me has been the number one way for me to share the love of Christ I because love that. people will ask, why are you like this? How are you like this? And then that gives me the opportunity to share with them right. my relationship with Jesus is my life, mm. it's my everything. Mm. And I have peace and hope and joy yeah. as a result of the confidence I have in Christ right. and his word. Right. It's not kinda true, it is true. It is true. And that even started early on for you. Talk about just even like as a young guy working in your boss. With Don. Yeah. yeah. And, and, I, and I was hesitant to share this, but this was something, you know, 30 years down the road is just, it's really precious. Um, so when I graduated from Grove City, my, my first job was outside sales. Yeah. You know, I had a sales manager and had a couple state territory. And so when my boss would come into town, we'd ride in a car mm -hmm. all over Ohio or all over Western Pennsylvania or yeah. whatever. And I can remember um, coming back one night late on a drive. And this guy said to me, was, he says, Jamie, I really want my son to be like you. Mm. You're just really different. And I was blown away. And you don't even know how to respond because you're very intimidated as a, as a young 22 yeah, year old yeah, by your first boss. Yeah, yeah. And I said, why do you say that? Hmm. And he said, you just have this joy. You have this enthusiasm. You're just different. Hmm. And I can't figure it out. And that was the opportunity to, to share why. with him yeah. the why. I'll never yeah. forget, I went home that night yeah. and I called two or three of the elders at the church. I called the senior pastor and I said, I need you guys to pray for me. I am witnessing to my boss tomorrow. <laughs> I'm super scared and they were probably laughing. But it was just awesome. But that's been that. my best way consistently Consist to share the love of Christ. And it's that, it's different I'm than what the you. world possesses. We hope you're enjoying Let's Chat, a Bible Chapel podcast. Be sure to subscribe and follow as we release new episodes every week. Now, let's get back to the conversation. It's a brand new day. There's the urgent gospel route like that we've done here where you need to be ready at any moment to share Jesus if you don't have a longevity run with a person. Like you're in a spot, the gospel comes up, be ready to share. But most often, uh, it's through relationships, neighbors, family, work, associates, where over time, God's going to open that door to share Jesus. And for you and for me as well, you know, with my neighbors, I did not go on my street when I came back from Wilkinsburg. 
and just start preaching Jesus. I've told this before. For the first year, they thought I was a terrorist because my title was pastor. They're like, stay away from the pastor. But then they saw he's a normal dude. Yeah. He actually likes to do normal things. And we got invited to things. And over time, just exuding Chris and I, who we are in Christ, mm -hmm. um, they have opened up which creates the avenue. And part of that is the joy we have in the Lord. In the yeah. relationship and you being intentional. I don't, Sharon says sometimes I get inside of people's personal space. Do you remember? I think I fist bumped you. I texted you. I, <laughs> I was so fired up with urgent gospel, yes. but I was like, that's what we as believers got to get excited about. Yeah. We've got to be equipped. We've got to study the word. We've yeah. got to be prepared. So when people ask us questions, we're ready. We're ready, yep. man. That scripture so, tells good us. Good job taking lead on that. I love that. Let's go. Hey, we're in this Let's together. Go. <laughs> All right, all right. So Are here we, we go. Are to have fun on this? Oh, 100%. We're joyful. It's, Let's the whole go. thing is share the joy. Share the joy. All right. So going back to really everything mm. we've been talking about, I love the, the flow because it all goes together. Now, when you're in college, like we talked about being a gross city and young, you're going to be hit also with the lies of the enemy mm. and the lies of this world, meaning that true joy, happiness, pleasure, is is from the world like the christian life is boring it's restrictive it's this or that talk about though how you have personally experienced there is no greater joy or pleasure than living actually within what you i love what you say the confines of god's word talk about that yeah so i'll i'll, I'll start with um um i feel like when i left grove city in our God bless Sharon and I with a great marriage. I walked away from 20 guys that were really studs, mm -hmm. physically and spiritually. And yep. I went through a, a quiet time crying out to the Lord saying, God, bring men into my life that I can do life with. I think men are wired yeah. to do life with that. And, and one of the things that I really connect with, Dave, is I connect with high testosterone guys that live a fully surrendered life and live within the confines of God's word. I love that phrase. And and I say that again, high testosterone guys that live a surrendered life within the confines of God's word. And I feel like if you can find men like that, are they boring? I don't think so. <laughs> um, are they weak? I don't, I don't think so. Right. Um, and, and is there great joy in living? And I think one of the things that as a man that you can struggle with, the lies are so intense. Like in my huddle group, you know, Ton Chilkin had us at the church getting together with guys and locking arms. That was really a monumental like phase two time of spiritual growth for me, yeah, right? Yeah. So I had my guys at Grove City that I was playing football with. Yep. And then, you know, maybe 10, 15 years after that, I got involved in this huddle group and we started memorizing scripture together. And one of the verses that we memorized was John 10, 10. Mm. And it says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I come that you may have life and have it to the full. And I feel like going back to what you were saying with the lies, yeah. I think um, the lies around money and materialism and stuff, yeah. really rough, yeah. right? Sex, I, I'll never forget um, being a young man listening to a dad talk to his son right in front of a group of young men saying, son, I want you to have sex with as many women as you can from age 18 uh -huh. to 28 to 30. Now you should probably slow down and get married around your 30. I couldn't even believe what I was hearing. I was like, is this for real? Is this what people say? Wow. Wow. And, and this is just what's out there. And if yep. you, let's think of like teenage kids and yeah. let's think of college kids yep. and alcohol out of control. Yeah. Totally. Um, yeah. And it's like, can we have fun yep. without alcohol? You mm -hmm. know, my guys, yeah, we, we can. Yeah, and I'm not saying it's you, sure. If you want to have a drink or two, fine. Right. But you can't let that be out of control. And I think that that's really hard for the world to understand yes. that we can be full of joy. Kind of saying yep. the lies of the world need to be put over here. Yep. We need to know God's word and live within the confines of that, and that produces joy and peace. Hundred percent, and lasting joy and peace. Some of that stuff it will give you a temporary high, but leads to destruction and no lasting. You've joy. seen it. Yes. You've seen it. I've seen it. I think 100%. any I think any adult yeah. has seen it. The right. question is, yeah. when are they mature enough to say, hey, this isn't long term right. peace bringing. 100%. Yeah, you hit uh, some of those big rocks. Another one of those is money. I think uh, when you're uh, graduating or your job or your family, there's a level of 100% you want to have the finances to provide for your family, but man, can that can that dollar become an idol? It was for me. Uh, I've, 
I, I always have to say, I probably have said this before, when you start to do ministry long enough, you told the same stories. But graduating from Grove City, I was in denial a little bit from God calling me to pastoral ministry. My dad was a pastor. He had me preaching when I was 16. I was the football chaplain at Grove yeah. City. And like, I, I knew that there was passion there wiring, but I'm not doing the same thing my dad did. And I saw, there's not a ton of material gain in being pastoral ministry. So I literally got three offers. I didn't even care what the job was. I said, which one gives me the highest salary? Perfect, I'm taking that job. Absolutely miserable for a year. So mm -hmm. then I took the second job that I was offered. Did okay, but was not where I needed to be. Then I took a third job in sales. And that's when God basically said, when are you going to listen to me, to what I'm calling you to do? And that's where I went and responded to vocational ministry. And I always said this, everybody wants to go up the corporate ladder, right? Mm -hmm. And I went from my first job, most amount of money, second job, less, third job, less, fourth job, ministry raising support, yet my joy went up. My joy went up, why? Because my joy was found in what he was calling me to do and in right. him finally, instead of in the dollar. And I had to experience that as a young 20s, up, upper 20s when I made that jump and not only has God provided, but no matter what, mm. no joy is found than being obedient to God's word and walking in step with his spirit for your life. I, There's no greater joy. I love the way you say that. You know, I'm in, God has blessed me. I, I run a wealth management company yeah. and I see a lot. And I think one of the things um, that I say to Sharon all the time is I praise Jesus for what he's let me see. You learn as yeah. we age, right? Yeah. And I feel like, in the 20 plus years I've been doing this, mm. I see God's word proven true every day by Amen. the people that we get to interact with. And I think some of the most joyful at peace people, they've got the least amount of stuff. Yeah. They're the most generous. Mm -hmm. They find sweetness in the little things. Mm. And at the core, it's all about living for Jesus. I'm not saying that stuff is wrong, but there right. needs to be a balance there. So good. All right, so good. All right, Let's go. now, the good thing about scripture is that scripture doesn't say find joy in the Lord when everything's going great and only when everything's going great because it's one thing to have joy in the Lord in the good times, but well, what about the hard times? You know, what about the deep struggles? So just talk about how you know uh, that you can experience joy of the Lord even through the hardships that come in life. Yeah. Just talk about that. Let's. I want. I want. I haven't. We haven't read anything, but I want. I want to read. I was. I was. I love this biblical definition yeah, go of joy. For it. Right. Go for it. It says, it's a feeling of good pleasure slash happiness that is dependent on who Jesus is rather than who we are mm. or what is happening around us. Mm. Joy is a lasting emotion, more like an internal state of being that comes from testing and following Jesus. The result of this is the fruit of the Spirit, which is totally different than the cultural definition of happiness. Mm. And I mean, you look at the fruit of the spirit, right? Yep. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness. I might yep. miss a couple of yeah, them, but just self-control. Yeah, it's, it's um, yeah. I, I look at that and I think so many people get confused with happy or sad. And, and Dave, you brought up a, a good point there with, um, how do you deal with it when things are hard, mm. when you've been betrayed? Yeah. when you've been lied to, if, if you're dealing with a, a loss of a loved one, loss of a job, we are all, God's word promises pain. And yeah. I think the mature believer needs to really understand storms are coming. Yeah. That's gonna blow up our world. So I've got a couple, um, can I just share with you a couple scripture there, Go right? For it. Um, I've, I've picked three verses that maybe if you're listening, you can write down and circle back on, but second Corinthians, um, eight and nine, it talks about being hard pressed, but not crushed mm -hmm. and in despair, but yep. not broken. Basically what God's word saying is get ready to get drilled and suffer <laughs> pain, but, but you're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Um, going back to that John 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. I come that you may have life and have it to the full. We got to know the promises of God's word. God's word. He's going to take care of us even when it's really hard. Yep. I think the next one that I want to point out is James um, 1, 2. And I think that says, consider it pure joy, my brothers, when you consider yeah. trials of various kinds. Of various kinds. Yeah. Just sweetness there in knowing God's got a plan. Yeah. 
And it's not going to be smooth sailing as believers. And I think knowing that, so when we're hurting, and I've struggled with this as, as well, yeah. but, but you've got to be able to step back and self-reflect when you're broken and yeah. say, Jesus, what am I to learn from this? Yeah. How can you get honor and glory in this? How can I be better for you? The last verse is, is, is Romans um, 5, 3 through 5, and that talks about, you know, suffering produces perseverance. And I think, you know, Dave, you fell in love with Kristen pretty young. Mm -hmm. um, you got married when you were? 24. So you're almost, or you're not almost 50, but we'll say you're over 40, right? Just over 40. Yeah. Are, you, are you trying to be better as a husband mm -hmm. and lover of her and your kid, right? And, and that's just like being a believer, yeah. like Jesus, I love you. I wanna know your word more. I wanna be right. better, just like we are in our marriages. Yeah. And I feel like we need to know trouble's coming. And, and when you really look at God's word and see that those promises are there, yeah. get ready. Right. Um, not easy. Yeah. I'm not saying it's gonna be easy, right. but, but we've gotta be able to step back and find joy in that. And I think once again, that going back to urgent gospel, yeah. the world looks at us dealing with hurt and maybe seeing a glimpse of joy saying that's weird that's different yeah i love it that's what it, it's so it's good. a learned behavior it's a learned behavior but it's not learned by your own power it's learned through the power of god's word right you just you just stated multiple passages that this isn't jamie just coming up with the fact that you can have joy in trial no god promises trials but he promises there's fruit from it there's joy yeah. in it and I'm excited because we're going to be unpacking James this fall and as a mm. church, and uh, and we'll, I'll be giving more of the history on who who James is, why this makes sense. He started this way, who he was writing to, yeah. why it makes sense. But I love that it says that that phrase "consider or count count it pure joy" um, means you really have to reckon and reason in those moments. Okay, yes, this stinks because I can mm -hmm. be real with God. This mm -hmm. moment stinks but I'm gonna consider it joyful that you're doing something through it. Yeah. I know you're always doing something through it, Lord. It, it's just, it's yeah. just, I've said it before, it's just a learned behavior. Like, yeah. Um, well, yeah, you've talked about, you know, joy, like any other aspect of our sanctification grows with age, grows yeah. with age. Um, and I love it because that same passage in James kind of has that steadfastness and, and so f and forth. And I've heard someone once say, it's almost like a boxer. Like when you're first in the ring in your first fight, man, those punches feel hard. Right. But when you become a seasoned fighter and you know how to move, and you know how to receive them and you're getting used to it, same thing in life. As you walk with Jesus, the trials keep coming, but you're more of a seasoned veteran in that joy of responding differently. It, I'm glad you, I, I experienced um, hurt life altering hurt a mm -hmm. little while ago. And, and and it's been 10 plus years, but I think one of the things that I can praise Jesus for is I can see that that was part of his plan for me. Yeah. So I can love others more effectively and, and care for people that he puts in my path that maybe I wouldn't have been able to understand what that true hurt was 100%. really from. And I, I like that with the bot, cause like it's coming. We just gotta yeah. be ready for it. hundred percent. And, and we don't need to be happy in the yep. middle of the pain, yep. but we've gotta have joy and peace knowing that, hey, God's got this. And what can we learn from it? Amen. All right, so you know what I love is the continuity. You know, Josh, I think about our guests and I mentioned this in the beginning uh, with Maureen who 81, uh, told me she wants bubbles and balloons and all this celebration stuff at her funeral one day. Yeah. Cause it's gonna be a party cause she's going where she wants to be. You're similar, you, know, you have said, you know, the Lord has a lot more run left in you at uh, just turning that 50, but you're ready to meet him. Like you don't yeah. fear death. So talk about how the joy of the Lord goes with no fear and death. Yeah, let's start with, right, who's, who's James Marshall Eisner? He is a dirty, rotten sinner in need of a savior. <laughs> he is a lost puppy, right? Going in the wrong direction without Christ. Yeah. And I think, but where I'm at is, I, I know my king, I know my creator, I know my savior. And yeah. that is so freeing and so sweet. Yeah. Um, and I believe in Jesus. I believe his word is true. I yeah. believe in heaven. I believe right. in life after death. Right. So when you get to that point, like, I'm crazy about Sharon. Like still head over heels crazy about Sharon. I want to spend every day with her. Yeah. But 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 she and I both know we're so um equally yoked in our surrender to Jesus that when our time, 
on this earth is over. Yeah. We're and, and we're at peace with that. Yeah. So I want. I, it's not like I'm saying I'm ready to die tomorrow. I am ready to die, die tomorrow. It's right. not that I want to die tomorrow. Exactly. But you know something? Let's let's celebrate when 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 this old dog gets to go, man. <laughs> it's a party. That's um, right. Amen. So. Does that, make, does that make sense? I'm just a hundred percent. I'm I, in the same boat with you. I, uh, I think you know the words of Paul that uh, you know he'd rather be with the Lord, but he knows that the Lord wanted him here for that season. I think all of us should have that that perspective. That if 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 he's our first love, yeah, just like you mentioned with Sharon, you well, want do you to believe be with it or them. not? Yeah. Do you believe heaven's going to be what it? I mean, it, and I would say you couldn't love Sharon with the love you have for her without Jesus, yeah. because if he's your first love. You be a better husband, a better father, she's like a, a better business. She's man like or woman. a plus in loving and serving me, so she, it yeah. would be totally impossible <laughs> for her to love me the way she does without Christ. So, yeah, pre pretty sweet. But um, you know, you go back to things. Think of the things that we've each seen in our yeah. years here. Yeah. Um, going back to like the lies that people fall for, like lies of the world, like that men can kind of fall for or women. Yeah. I see myself hurting for them not angry and upset for the life choices they're but hurting because i want them to know jesus right, right and i right. know that they're on a path to destruction same thing with death i mean have you been around people mm. that when they die there's no hope there's no future right it's it's horrible yeah it's so sad right. where have you been around believers yeah when they're sick and they're ready to yeah. die it's amazing it's a, we call it a celebration for yeah, a reason and, and and so those are just things i think with the heaviest things here on earth right we can have nonstop. it's all about jesus yep. it's all because of him yep i'm getting rowdy it's like sitting you're here. ready to go it's like i'm ready to just <laughs> go well <laughs> it. um is it in christ alone where it says no fear in death this is the power of christ in me some of the best lyrics yeah. ever written yeah uh, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. My brother, this has been phenomenal. And uh, you were gracious, you know, in your words of me. And I'm not doing this because you said that. Uh, I love you because you inspire me. And I love that, uh, you know, when you're a pastor of a church, it's good to have brothers where you can just be one of the guys. Mm. And you treat me that way. Mm. Sometimes you're too tough on the golf course when we get to play. You know, you want to beat me up, but <sighs> it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. It's good. I yeah. need that. But your encouragement, your inspiration, and I would say for everyone listening, I don't care, uh, male, female, age and stage, there's so much we could take from our conversation today on what it means to live with that joy of the Lord and be fired up for each day. But also, I do think it's important, I, I think it's so critical, Jamie, that you have brothers in your life who challenge you, encourage you, pray with you, inspire you, memorize scripture with you, and we always come back to this theme. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ and you don't seek out that type of community, you're missing it. Like you need those people in your life. Yeah. You need those people in your life. God has blessed me with mentors and yeah. accountability partners. Right. We're sinners in need of a savior and yeah. he's wired us to do life together. So yes. I, my inner circle outside of my family has some men yeah. that are very intentional yeah. saying, Jamie, you staying on track, yeah. right? Right. And that's, Important. So critical. So, so, amen. so find, your, find your guys to keep you going in the right direction. Yeah, amen. Jesus, help us. Amen. All right, well, let me pray for you to wrap up. I always love to pray thank for you. our guests. You let's down do with it. that? Yeah, All let's right. do it, man. Father, I praise you for this time with Jamie. I thank you for, man, just the conversation we got to have about what you've done in his life from his upbringing with his parents. We praise God for them, how you sovereignly brought him and Sharon together at a young age. We praise you for Sharon and who she is as a as a daughter of the king, a sister in Christ, uh, at who she is as a wife, as a mother, and now a grandmother, and just for their marriage, that they they are two living out and representing, Lord, to the best of their ability, empowered by your spirit, that I know the Eisners, they wanna represent Christ and his church in their marriage. I praise you for that. I praise you for their kids in the sweet season. It's that empty nesters. Uh, and I know I'm thankful that they're being able to spend some time with their daughter and granddaughter. And but uh, I pray for their marriage in this in this transition season of life. And I just pray for my brother Jamie as he continues to do ministry. I'm so thankful at a young age he realized uh, through you working through a mentor that Jamie, every job is ministry. Continue to empower him at his workplace, in the community that he and Sharon reside in, and in our church. I'm thankful that the Eisners and their legacy of serving uh, as brothers and sisters at the Bible Chapel. So I pray over him, pray over their family, and I pray over every person who has listened to this podcast that we would not walk away in this series 
and just say, man, that was cool listening to you know five people who have the joy of the Lord. I, I pray we leave this series saying, I want some of that. I'm gonna do that through the echoes of being in God's word being in Christian community, serving, and making it a point every day to put my joy, as we heard in that definition, in the person of Jesus, not even in who we are or our circumstances, but my joy is found in the person of Christ. So we pray that over every listener right now. Father, we love you and we praise you, and we just pray that you would be with each of us wherever we go today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank Thank you, brother. Thanks for listening to Let's Chat, a Bible Chapel podcast. If you're in the Pittsburgh area and looking for a home church, we want to invite you to visit us this weekend. You can click the link in the description and show notes for more information. If you want to join us online, you can visit BibleChapel.org. We can't wait to connect with you. It's a brand new day. Hey.